All right, guys, how's it going? It is Monday, the 14th of November 2022, and you're watching CopTop.tv. Right. Where does all this shit come from? I'm sat here. One minute it's all right, next minute it's fucking all. It's like I've not even eaten anything, you know what I'm saying? I know what you're thinking. You think you have your fuck. I haven't. I don't tweet. Not yet. Right, uh, I was going to say, I uh, just want to give a shout out to those of you that are supporting the fundraiser. Um, www.coptalk.tv let's make Coptalk TV great again go over there have a look at the information that's on there and if you want to help a brother out I will put you on that list and include you in the video description below and in every video in 2023 have a look have a look see who's in that list because they'll be there all next year that's right as long as I'm alive so uh, I want to do you know what I've seen this article on the Echo it says Liverpool take over state of players four part is ruled out of buying club from FSG uh, this is by Dave Powell and it's just like I don't know like the, these days I mean the Echo used to be great but these days they're the last people I'd be listening to but it's a very informative article and it just makes me wonder where all this information is coming from mm, so I need to I need to give that some thought to be honest and honestly I'm not taking piss um it's a very detailed article. I would suggest you go and look at it. If you Google Liverpool takeover state of play as four F O U R parties ruled out of buying club from FSG, and it was published on the fourteenth of November uh, this afternoon. Or just go to the Echo, and I'm sure you'll find it. So we're going to skip through here. Uh, all this guff here. One name that hasn't been mentioned a great deal yet is that of David Blitzer and Josh Harris, who, through their Harris Blitzer Sports and Entertainment HBSE business, were in the race to acquire Chelsea earlier this year. HBSE have a track record in sport through ownership of the Philadelphia 76ers, while Blitzer and Harris both own 18% each of Crystal Palace. Any deal to move on Liverpool would require them to divest any interest that they have in Palace, although Blitzer, when speaking at the Sportico Invest in Sports Conference in New York last month, where the Echo were present, hinted at their approach if a major Premier League asset became available. See, the Echo have covered quite a bit from that Sportico Invest um, conference, which at the time I thought, why are they there? Hmm. Hmm. Oh, yeah, I just I don't know. I just I, at the time I thought that, and now and now, and, mm, I, I just you got to sometimes you got to read this stuff, guys, and take it in. Do you know what I mean? Hmm. I'll think about that one when I'm in shower later. Right. <clears throat> at the, this is a quote. At the end of the day, I love Crystal Palace, and people who know me well will know I love Crystal Palace. Said the 53 year old, and extremely well-known figure in investment circles in the US. But there are a handful of teams, brands out there on a global basis, and Chelsea is one of them. The opportunity to invest in that particular situation with a very small number of people. Frankly, given it was a complicated situation, we were comfortable giving that our best shot. We would have had to divest our interest in Crystal Palace had that come through. Um, sorry, I've got messages. I'm going to turn it over, otherwise it'll throw me off. But there are a handful of... We would have had to divest our interest in Crystal Palace had that come through. If that had happened, it would have been a really sad day in one sense. But again, back to the investment part, it would have been a really interesting investment in terms of what's out there for Chelsea. Then I would have probably had to hide a little bit when I went to London. <laughs> um, okay. He loves Crystal Palace. Would he be willing to switch... To a rival, and it's not really a, a rival if you know what I mean on a footballing sense. But if you're if you're a football, see I've done it again. I must have shit on my fingers. Need a fucking cleaner to. I can't be doing with this. Fuck, hang on, where is it? Is it a bit of dust. Tell her I've been a woman around here for a while. I'll fucking say it. <coughs> uh, fuck off, men are, men are shit at cleaning. Um, I don't know if I'm not having men around here. Uh, okay, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm. This is the first time I've read all of this article, by the way. So I'm just like I like to read it and digest it. Maybe I should have done that before I made the video. Um, the I, the reason I was making the video was I was just thinking like the echo just seemed to be 
throwing a bit out there with it, and, and detailed as well, not speculative, which is just, it's just something here or something. I don't know yet. Um, the Echo continue to say, there are also string li strong links between HBSE and Liverpool. Harrison Blitzer's consortium that sought to acquire Chelsea this year had former British Airways chief Sir Martin Broughton, the man who held the early chairmanship at Liverpool under FSG, and was a key player in their acquisition of the club from Tomix and George Gillette. All right. Okay. Wall Street financier Michael Klein was also part of the HSBE Broughton bid for Chelsea. Klein, having been recommended by Broughton, for, was it Broughton or Broughton? Broughton I mean, for that chairman's role and having been a major factor in facilitating the deal for FSG to take over the club. There are strong ties that exist within the group to the current ownership and the club itself. Do you see? I, see, I read all this stuff. It just makes me fucking sick. Do you know what I mean? Like, oh yeah, we love I love Crystal Palace, but I might love Chelsea now. Hmm. Another US billionaire that may well have had his interest peaked is that of Stephen Pagliuca, co-chairman of Bain Capital, which manages more than 130 billion of assets globally in the owner of both the Boston Celtics NBA team and Serie A side Atalanta. Don't ever be impressed when they say... Uh, you know, manage more than 130 billion or millions or billions of assets because my son Robert, uh, who some of you will know, like it was his birthday a couple of days ago. He's uh, how, how old is he? He's just 23 now, right? Rob has got a. <laughs> this is so funny. Rob uh, manages, he has clients with hundreds of millions of, of, of um, you know business or whatever it just sounds really funny when it when i think about it because i remember one day robert couldn't work out how to plug a, a tv like a cable in the back of a tv and i nearly kicked his teeth in he was a young lad you know what i mean he, you know so it would have been but old enough to get a kick in but what i mean by that is he was just stressing me out you know i was like put just put the cable in there rob he's like i don't know how to get it in dad and now he's responsible for managing a lot of money he's rob <laughs> Sorry, I just thought I'd mention that. This is a family channel. You know, people have followed my channel for years and seen my kids grow up. You know what I'm saying? So, he's 67. He was another major player in the race for Chelsea before it's sale, and his appetite for a Premier League team in the future is, according to US sources, still intact despite a rather bruising bid for the London club several months back. The Echo have reached out to representatives of both both HBSE and Pagliuca last week around any potential interest in Liverpool have yet to receive a response. Another major US billionaire to have been mentioned as someone who will be likely to be monitoring the situation is former Microsoft CEO Steve Barmer, whose near 70 billion wealth was derived in his holding and sale of Microsoft stocks during the company's remarkable growth period. He's 66 and a passionate sports fan often found courtside at Crypto.com Arena, formerly the Staples Centre. And after retiring from Microsoft, after becoming a multi-billionaire, due to his stock options, he was the winning bidder for the Los Angeles Clippers NBA franchise. Historically, the Clippers have been LA basketball's poor relation and were a failing team for a long time, with Baumer's arrival coinciding with the improvement in 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 on-court performance and the acquisition of a number of high-profile players during his tenure. The Clippers... Are you bored yet? Yeah, I'm, I'm bored, but it's relevant. The Clippers are also set to move to a new purpose-built arena in Inglewood from 2024. I thought Clippers were them, like, sexy women that worked on the buses in the 70s. Weren't they called Clippers? You know what I mean? Do you, did any of you ever watch on the buses? Yeah? You know what I'm saying? When they had them little short skirts on going up the stairs, up the stairs in Clippers. You know what they called Clippers? No. Mm. So, and then we go on to the Indian billionaire. There are uh, right. So, and, and they're saying he ain't interested. And then there are names definitely ruled out. Two of them from the Middle East. Among them, Bahrain Sovereign Wealth Fund, Mumtalakat Holdings, an Emirates Investment Authority, the Sovereign Wealth Fund of the UAE. British billionaire Sir Jim Ratcliffe, founder of chemicals firm INEOS, an owner of French side OGC Nice, nice, whatever you want to call it, has ruled himself out of the running. The Oldham born Manchester United fan was in, oh, fuck, man, 
was in the race for Chelsea and also expressed an interest in taking over from the Glazer family at Old Trafford. Redbird Capital Partners, the New York Red based New York based investment fund that owns eleven percent of FSG through a seven hundred and fifty million dollar struck in twenty twenty one won't be part of the conversation either, despite having been erroneously linked. I can't read any more of this out, right? It's all that yank yank sorry, I don't shouldn't say yank 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 really, because you know, I got a lot of American friends and um and smooths me um my bestie, you know what I'm saying? We have to, you know, we have to remember we're not against American own. Well, we're not against American people, but I am kind of against American ownership because I don't like franchise and who's messaging me now? Mm. Shosh, you ever heard of Shosh? S H O S H. Get on YouTube, Shosh. Let's see what Shosh has got to say. Hooray. Um. No, we're not okay. Like, I'm not like, listen, I ain't got a problem with Americans at all. Love America, uh, Murka. But I, do, I don't like the idea of them, uh, their investment. I don't like the way that they look at the game. I don't like anything to do with American sports, you know, like the cheese around it. And it is cheesy. And if you're American and that offends you, that's just tough shit because it is cheesy. And when it comes to the English game, we're not like that. You know what I mean? We're not like that. We don't want. Fucking cheerleaders. Now, who remembers when Sky Sports first started their coverage and you had cheerleaders at the side of pitch and fucking fireworks and all that? So, give it a rest. You know what I mean? Now, we just want to go to, like, you know, we just want to go to a football game in winter when it's pissing down and freezing. You might not want to do it, but we love it, really. You know, get a pie or something like that, and a cuppa or a pint. Hmm. Yeah, we're not interested in all the cheesiness. And then, unfortunately, that comes with American sports. And the amount of commercial, you know, like the adverts and stuff. I hate it. Yeah, just me. I me, mean, I want to go the other direction, mate. I want to go the other direction. Yeah, I don't care about. Uh, I, well, I'm not put off by the other direction. And the Indian link was uh, pretty good as well, which I'm a little bit. I've just done a video on on here for the members actually, channel members. And cop told me whatever the fucking people that support my content, and uh, yeah, that, that yeah. Go and have a look at that if you can. But anyway, this is a terrible video. But I go but you know, I go back to my, I'm just thinking like I just noticed the echo seem um I don't know, some are not right. See I, I I should do this not in a video. Normally I you know, like when I'm at home and I sit there and I think things even when I'm in bed I'm like mm. and I try to put my finger on it, you know what I'm saying? There's a joke in there somewhere. I'm not you know, the echo is very poor really today. But they seem to be um they seem to be claiming the know a lot. Anyone can do that, I guess. Why are they doing it? Why are they running a headline saying four parties ruled out when none of those parties have ruled themselves? in or are the same ruled out from rumors i guess that yeah but then why are they ruled out i, I don't see any comment from um from what, what i don't understand like i don't understand does anybody actually can anyone am i missing something here have you seen anywhere in the last week or so anyone on record quotes credible ruling themselves out i haven't said i keep seeing people being linked with us and then the media saying now they're not interested like the indian link for example they said you know they said he's not interested but the only thing with that is it said a source or representative of that company or whatever or you know associated to him said it was fake no name no quotes or anything like that. I just think, and they, and these were at that 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 uh, conference. I forget what it was called in um, in New York, weren't they? Do you know what I think, right? And I don't know if I'm right about this. I'll, I'll think about this. But just my, you know, like my, my first. If 
feels like a it feels like a bit of a game. It feels a bit artificial. It feels a bit artificial. If it like for example, the echo they'll come out and tell you that someone's interested. Then the next minute they don't. It's like it's like it's like the the like not just them. It, it just feels. I don't know. Maybe it's just them. I feel like a detective. I feel like Columbo. Frost. <laughs> um. More like cracker. Um. Actually, you know what? This is gonna be a bit tin foil uh, on the head kind of thing. A bit conspiracy here. I d I do believe that um, that they're looking at selling. I do believe that. I've thought that for a while anyway. I just, I just feel like this would be a really bizarre thing to say, but I feel, I just feel like who's this journalist again, Dave Powell? I just feel like they're they're, they're in on like creating, creating. Are they creating interest? Are they trying to create interest? Are they? Are they? Because you know. <laughs> Usually I don't make videos like this. Usually I think about it and then I'll go, yeah, and then come out and make the video. This is in real time. There's just something suspicious about it. There's something suspicious about it. I don't know, I need to think about it. I just feel like they're... Um, I don't know. It just seems different to me than the than normal newspaper chatter. You know, like when they're speculative and they just say a load of shite and you get to the end of the article and go, actually, there was nothing in that. This seems a little bit quite detailed, like with specific names and, you know, like a bit of research has gone into this. You know, there's all these figures and that. You don't just pluck them out of memory. You know, someone's someone's researched all this stuff. And I just find it very strange that we're just seeing such a wealth of information at a time when there actually is no fucking real information out there from places like the Echo that you wouldn't expect to to be like the Daily Star or something like that. Not I, I don't think the Echo is great anymore personally because I just think it's a uh, a cesspit of advertising now. That's through no fault of the journalists or anything, but it's certainly not what the Echo used to be. You know. Um. Maybe I need to do like a live stream on this to talk it over with you guys. Because I like to listen to what you guys think at the same time. Because you, you, you bounce ideas around. It just seems very, very detailed. At a time when there is no real detail. But yet they're not really... You wouldn't say that they were like really in the loop, I don't think. It's fucking out. I'll, I'll work it out. I'll work it out. Maybe not tonight, but I'll work it out. I'm sorry if this is a poor video. I wanted to, The reason I wanted to make the video as well was I, I did want to mention the... I uh, forget where his fucking names are. There's not many names on this article. Uh, HBSC, that was it, wasn't it? Harris Blitzer Sports and Entertainment. You know, sometimes, you know, like, sometimes these articles can be put out there to, to help someone. Now, in the past, Liverpool Football Club used to, uh, Liverpool Football Club and the Echo, you know, obviously had great relationships over the years. This is pre-American ownership, going back to the, the others as well. Um, and it was kind of like, you know, you scratch my back and I'll scratch yours kind of thing. And, you know, when, when articles used to appear in the Echo... Back in the day online and that I used to think, right, why are they putting that out? Why it was you know, some so I'm just trying to think like who does this who is this article trying to help? Is it is it genuinely trying to help the fans with ideas ideas and suggestions of uh potential interested parties? But that's very that's speculative, but there's a lot of facts and figures and stuff like that in here. So this is there's a bit of effort gone into this. Is it you know, is it Sometimes journalists have friends in high places and 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 try to get 
things out there for a reason or try to kill things. Uh, at the end of the day, I'm just very suspicious with with um, the coverage of it all a little at the minute. And I and I have said that earlier this week. I think over the weekend I said don't be. I think I did an editorial actually on the members website. I think it might be on Cop Talk main site. I can't remember. Um, and I said, you know, don't don't trust any of these people at the moment. I, you know, I would trust them when they come out and say, uh, you know, there's deal imminent or, you know, this. It, then fine. But at this speculative stage, I'm really suspicious of them. Um, and I said I would pay more attention to reports coming from outside the UK at the moment. You know, people outside that clique of journalists that basically are all in that little family. And, um, you know, you can imagine them all in the little WhatsApp group and that. Uh, there isn't any decent journalists now, I don't think, because none of them have got the balls to say what they want because they can't, because they lose their access, you know. So when, when was the last time you saw in a newspaper, like the Mirror, for example, or even the Star or the Sunday? Do you remember the Sunday newspapers, what they used to be like? You know, when was the last time you saw an exclusive to do with Liverpool Football Club? By a journalist that you could trust and you thought, oh, fucking hell, that's going to happen. How did he find that out? You know, your journalists used to have that, you know, you used to have that you know, impression of them, didn't you, in like a Mac and a hat on and that, and got, you know, snooping around for all the news. It's not like that anymore, is it? It's more um, controlled. And, you know, and I thought about that today. You know the, the, the interview to do with Ronaldo and uh, Piers Morgan? Um, some, I was watching some, some YouTube thing came up earlier, just auto-played, and this lad was saying, you know, like, how did they manage to keep that out of the media? How did, you know, how did no one find out about that? How did a single journalist not find out about that interview uh, until now? And it's like the old journalists have gone, isn't it? Because you've now got the athletic, um, and these club owners now have got so much power that you know if you get excluded from any of these press conferences and whatnot. You fucked. What they could really do with is an alternative to the likes of the athletic and that, and have it like fucking you know old school like we're gonna we're gonna because you know, there's no journalists out there that say. But do you know what I mean, guys? Old school, like an old school, like just someone that had the balls to to get out there and report like on a, on a on a bigger scale. They wouldn't have the access. But I know for a fact that a lot of these journals still get information, they just dare publish it. Hmm. This is a terrible video, I know, but that was in re it's in real time, you know? So um, just just think about what I said. I'm just suspicious of some of the reporting at the moment. And, and, and I'm, 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 I'm just baffled by that article. I don't know, I might even delete this video. No, no. Right, I'm off. Um, Please read the video description about how you can support my channel. Ah, just one thing to, to, to summarize, and there's a lot of names in there, but I just feel like, I feel like that article is bigging up or pushing uh, David Blitzer and Josh Harris. I feel like that's the I feel like that's the objective of the objective of that article. That's my conclusion. I feel like that's the objective of the article. There's other names in there, but I fit and that's the this is the first one in the article that they talk about. Uh, and you know they spoke. Uh, they're talking about when 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 Blitzer spoke at Sportico Invest in, in New York last month, where the Echo were, uh, and it just it just. I feel like that article is about, hey, look at these, you know, does the journalist responsible know these people or has a connection to something, something there, like, I think. My advice would be to look for anything to do with David Blitzer and Josh Harris, this Harris Blitzer Sports and Entertainment, HBSE over the coming weeks because maybe they will uh, enter the fray somewhere. What I will be doing tomorrow when I'm back in my office, uh, I have four computers around me at my workstation and I monitor things, you know, conversation on 
anywhere on social media, if their names are mentioned, it will ping on my screen in real time. Uh, and I'll be setting one up for that. Just something about me. There's other names mentioned in this article. You know, they're talking about the other strong links, other strong links between HBSE and Liverpool, talking about Broughton. Is it Broughton? It'd be more likely for Broughton. I don't think you pronounce his name like that, do you? Can't remember. You know what I'm like with names. If it's not Jack Daniels or John Smith, I ain't got a fucking clue. It's more it would be more likely for him to have some kind of contact at the Echo from them previous days. And if he was heading a consortium previously to do with Chelsea, I believe, um, and they're now looking at, hey, you know, because imagine that, imagine you're already in a consortium and then you're going to try and buy a Premier League club like Chelsea and it don't work. And a few months later, Liverpool comes up. Are you telling me they don't have a conversation and go, hey, I'm not saying, hey, guys, Liverpool's up for sale now, you know. I've got some contacts in the city. We can soon put our name out there. But why would they want the name out there? Hmm. Food for thought, I think. Some of you, you know, some of you, I know some of you don't like it, you just like them little short videos and just fucking want to get on, you know what I mean? But there's some of us out there that like to sit and debate and talk about it. And try and put it together uh, and i was doing that from the summer you know that i was car i was behaving like this in the summer saying the summer not right upstairs so much brewing and we've seen it come out does anybody know anything about blitzer and harris and hbsc i would this is what i will do tomorrow and some of you might beat me to it I will look for interviews that Broughton, if he's got Broughton, man, Broughton, if he's given interviews before, like exclusive interviews, I wonder to Dave Powell. That's just, very quickly. That's 2017. Right, I ain't got time to do it. I just want to have a quick look. Who was Brown talking to there? He was talking to Neil Jones, who is now at goal, I think, right? Mm. Like I was saying, uh, I have a little nosy over the coming weeks uh, regarding these, um, what's it, HSB, what H HBSC. Harrison Blitzer, and if you you know uh, get if you like digging into stuff like I do, um, I would have a look at those the reports concerning them uh, and their interest in Chelsea at the time. I don't know anything about these uh, these individuals, by the way. I'm sorry if this is a shit video, but um, this is just like literally in real time. You know, just just so much of some some of them stack up right about the article. I feel like there's a reason for it, and I don't feel it's for our benefit. Just saying. All right, might be wrong. Speak to you later, guys. All right.